In Surah Al-Mu'minun, chapter 23, verses 12 to 14, there are approximately eight beautiful points, eloquent points, describing the development of the human embryo in a very unique and eloquent way. First and foremost, the Quran mentions Nutfa, Nutfa. Now, according to classical dictionaries like Lisan al-Arab, Lisan al-Arab, and academic dictionaries like Lane's lexicon, this word can mean a singular entity which is part of a bigger group of its kind, a single sperm from a collection of millions of sperms, and it can also refer to one female egg from a group of many other eggs in the ovaries. Hamza Zortis, senior researcher and lecturer at the Islamic Education and Research Academy, claims that a term used in the Quran called Nutfa is defined by the 14th century classical lexicon named Lisan al-Arab as a singular entity from a bigger group of its kind, and that this definition means that the term nutfa refers to the sperm, ovum, and even the zygote, and not merely and purely the semen, which was considered as the reproductive material by those in the ancient world. Hamza's goal is for us to be impressed by a 7th century book making a reference to sperm cells and ovum and even the zygote long before scientists discovered them. Of course, then some of us decided to check Lisan al-Arab, and we could not find any definition even remotely close to a singular entity from a bigger group of its kind. Some of us then asked Hamza on his Facebook page to provide the original Arabic sentence from Lisan al-Arab that says Nutfa is a singular entity from a bigger group of its kind. Hamza said he will get back, and when he did get back to us, it was in this form, found in version 2.1b, of his paper released in April 2012. He now says this very convenient definition is suggested by the following words in Lisan al-Arab. A single drop of water remaining in an emptied bucket. He also retracts his original position that Nutfa can mean a sperm or an ovum. His new definition is hilariously desperate, as he states Nutfa means a drop of fluid containing sperm or ovum. Let's not even comment on how much of a pathetic inference it is to say that the statement a single drop of water remaining in an emptied bucket suggests the very convenient definition of a singular entity from a bigger group of its kind. The reason for not commenting on it is because this is not where the story ends. Some of us then decided to check Lisan al Arab again, and we still could not find the definition of a single drop of water remaining in an emptied bucket. However, there were two instances that could be considered as contenders for this definition. The first instance is only remotely close due to it containing a reference to a drop of water. However, this clearly cannot be helpful to Hamza or any other Muslim because this definition is not even referring to the same word in the Quran. The word in the Quran is Nutfa. The word here is Nutafa. Secondly, Lisan al-Arab is not even defining Nutafa as a drop of water. Instead, Nutafa is defined as a pearl of pure color, which the dictionary describes as being similar to a drop of water. It is not saying Nutafa is a drop of water. Therefore, this cannot be what Hamza is referring to. The second instance comes very very close to Hamza's given definition from Lisan al-Arab. However, it is also vastly different from what Hamza would like it to be. Hamza states that Lisan al-Arab defined Nutfa as a single drop of water remaining in an emptied bucket. What Lisan al-Arab actually says in the Arabic is the following, Translation, The little water remaining in the bucket. The key words are alma al-qalil. Alma is the commonly used word for water. Al-qalil means little or small amount. It does not mean a single drop. The Arabic for a single drop would be al qatar al-wahida. So let's paint the picture so far. Lisan al-Arab actually defines Nutfa as the little water remaining in the bucket. Hamza mistranslates Lisan al-Arab and claimed that it defined Nutfa as a single drop of water remaining in a bucket. Hamza then claimed, without any justification, that his mistranslation suggests the very convenient definition of a singular entity from a bigger group of its kind. Hamza then uses this desperately weak inference, based on a mistranslation, to make the claim that Nutfa refers to a sperm, ovum, and even the zygote. Or at least that was the case in version 1. Since he got busted on his misrepresentation of Lisan al-Arab, his version 2.1 suggests in a very convoluted manner that Nutfa refers to a drop of fluid containing sperm or ovum. Now if you thought such an amount of academic dishonesty was the end of it all, think again. Here are some other statements from Lisan al-Arab that Hamza did not show us. For example, Lisan al-Arab states, 
which literally translates to Nutfa is the water of the man, which is always understood to refer to semen. Likewise, Lisan al-Arab also states, Wabihi samil maniyun nutfa lakultuhu, which translates to, by this, semen is called nutfa for its small amount. Thus, Lisan al-Arab states very specifically that semen was called nutfa by the Arabs because of its small amount. In other words, semen was called nutfa because semen is a small amount of liquid, a ma al-qalil. If that wasn't clear enough, consider this. The very statement from Lisan al-Arab that Hamza mistranslated and subsequently made extremely weak inferences from in order to define Nutfa as perm, ovum, zygote, higgs, boson, whatever, was in reality and originally used by the ancient Arabs to define Nutfa as nothing more than semen. Yet if you thought such an amount of desperation was the end of it all, think again. The following is a hadith from the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, peace and blessings be upon him, that was never mentioned by Hamza. The hadith states the following regarding nutfa. Inna ahadakum yujma'u khalquhu fi batni ummati arba'ina yawman nutfa. Translation. Verily, the creation of each one of you is brought together in his mother's womb for forty days in the form of a nutfa. Whether nutfa means semen, sperm, ovum, or even the zygote. Hell, I will even let it be a blastocyst for all I care. Humans do not exist in the form of any of these for a period of forty days. Muhammad is wrong, the Quran is wrong, and perhaps this is the reason why this hadith was never mentioned by Hamza Zortzis. Have you ever seen a man more incompetent? Have you ever seen such a display of academic dishonesty? Would you like to see more examples of such dishonest attempts by Hamza Zortzis? Well, now you can, with embryology in the Quran much ado about nothing. A refutation of Hamza Zortzis, Embryology in the Quran, a Scientific Linguistic Analysis of Chapter 23 authored by myself and Martin Taverell. And the best part is that it is all for free. I'm not even gonna ask for donations like a certain someone. All you have to do is visit www.embryologyinthequran.blogspot.com where the paper can be downloaded or read online. The blog dedicated to debunking the famous Islamic embryology claim also presents the paper in an easily accessible and readable format by dividing the individual sections of the paper into different pages as well as providing resources for researching the content and raising questions or criticisms. The paper can be discussed in the comment sections of the blog without any restrictions on the character limit. The blog also has information on how to contact the authors of the paper. If you're interested in knowing more about the paper, tune in to the Gin and Tonic show airing on September 22nd at 8pm GMT. The episode will be subsequently uploaded to the YouTube channel, The Gin and Tonic Show. Please mirror this video if you can and spread the news. Thank you very much.